So anyway, what I'd like to do here is put this uh, HCC uh, into perspective of the other treatments, not only laparoscopic liver resection. And what we're talking about here is small HCC, basically a transplantable HCC. And this is a, a liver transplantation specimen, and this shows the HCC, the cirrhosis, and a nodule, regenerative nodule, which will become a HCC someday. So this is why we have to do uh, a resection which will be parenchymal sparing, although it should be uh, ideally um, anatomic, and then we will have recurrence. So what, what can we do? So, uh, and again, the, the three treatments that are uh, available here, as Ronnie Poon mentioned earlier, are resection, radiofrequency ablation, and transplantation. And again, transplantation can be used up front. It can be used after a bridge treatment, which can be RFA or resection, and it can be used as a salvage procedure. That means that you, the patient's resected or ablated, and the uh, transplantation is used as a rescue procedure after recurrence has occurred. And why is that? It's because when you decide to transplant, you put the patient on the list. <clears throat> the patient will wait for a certain amount of time, and then when it reach, reaches vascular invasion, then it's too late, and this is where the patient drops out. So we need some kind of bridge treatment here, unless we can have uh, readily available organs. And this is what's shown here in this uh, several papers that show that an intention to treat liver transplantation is not as uh, effective as it should be because patients are progressing and they, go, they drop out of the waiting list. So the other option is uh, radiofrequency ablation, which is uh, certainly appealing because it's, it's even less invasive than laparoscopic liver resection, but what happens is that you have a risk of recurrence, and this patient actually was a transplant candidate, but he, he was not a transplant candidate anymore. And what happened is that we resected him, and he's still alive for some reason. But anyway, so radiofrequency ablation before transplantation, if you use in HCC less than three centimeters, what you see here in these three papers, one by Mazzaferro, which is the, the most accurate one, I guess, is that the percentage of viable tumor is 37% altogether but if you use it in tumors more than three centimeters, it's going to be up to 71%. And if you wait more than six months for a graft, it's going to be even more. So clearly, resection is really one of the a good uh, option. But yet, I don't think these two, uh, resection versus uh, ablation, are really competitive. I think they're more uh, complementary. And here for us, for example, when we have a superficial tumor, we don't think it's a good candidate for ablation because of the seeding problem, and you, you won't have a good ablation here, but it's easy to resect. Whereas you won't uh, resect this uh, tumor by a, a, an extended epitectomy, and here you have enough liver around to do a, a nice try at RF. So we can use both. And finally, what I want to show you here is that HCC, in, in, at least in, in, in our center, is about the same numbers of resections that, that METS. And 29% of resections were for HCC. And among those, until from 1998 until now, we've done 36% by laparoscopy. So what we need to do here is do a planification of surgery. We need parenchymal sparing, and we need anatomical resection. And why anatomical resection? I won't go back into this, but Jack Belgetti said that very nicely this morning, and I, I will skip that. But you cannot really do an anatomic resection in all locations, except for Gaillet, or maybe Dr. Hahn can do it. But this is, for example, for segment eight resection. You can do this by laparotomy with the right hepatic vein here, the middle hepatic vein here, and segment eight.